the B.O. Savar Law. I'm not going to perform a rigorous derivation of the B.O. Savar Law here, but what I will say is it is essentially Ampere circuit law just turned around. Ampere circuit law says that there's a magnetic field intensity circulating around an electric current density. We can think of this equation. If we know H, how do we calculate J? Well, what if that's the other way around? What if we know J, the electric current density, and we want to calculate the magnetic field intensity? Well, that's the B.O. Savar law. It's just Ampere circuit law turned around. And we have three main ways that we tend to write it. We have calculating the magnetic field intensity around line currents, around surface currents, and around volume currents. Other than being a one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional integration, they differ a bit in how they're describing the current. And so, of course, a line current is defining in terms of a differential length. We have a differential area for surface current and a differential volume for volume current. Let's go ahead and visualize what this equation means. So I've got the equation written over to the left and a visualization of what that equation is talking about over here on the right. So this brown thing, this is a wire and it's carrying current I. And we're looking at some differential piece of current here. So it's carrying current I and it has some vector differential length. And so the vector differential length has a direction and also the scalar differential length. And we're interested in observing a magnetic field at some point over here. Now, since we're observing a magnetic field from a differential current element, it turns out we're going to be observing a differential magnetic field. The vector AR, the unit vector AR, is a unit vector in the direction connecting our differential current element along the line toward where, of, where we are observing the magnetic field. And then the, the R is the, simply the magnitude of this vector R. That's the distance from the differential current element out to where we're observing the field. Now, since this is calculating a differential magnetic field, it makes sense then that we would have to integrate this in order to get a total magnetic field. We would have to integrate in this case along the total length of the wire to get the total magnetic field out here. So a differential current element only produces a differential magnetic field. This follows the right hand rule. And why is that? Well, because we have a cross product and the cross product obeys the right hand rule. So we have our IDL. This is the differential current element. This is in the direction of the current. And so in this case, we have some bar carrying current upward. So the differential current is upward. We have this AR, which is a unit vector connecting our differential current element that we're integrating out to where we're observing the field. So the cross product leads to this right hand rule. So in the end, we're going to calculate a magnetic field that is circulating around this current element. So if we take our right hand and curl the right fingers in the same direction that the magnetic field is circulating, then the thumb on the right hand will be pointing in the direction of the current. And you can do this either way. If you know the current first, you can determine the direction of the circulation of the magnetic field. Or if you know the direction of the circulation of the magnetic field, you can determine which way the current is flowing. In the B.O. Savar law, there is a radial dependence. So this is sort of a top view of a differential current element, and we're looking at the magnetic field decay. And it turns out that has a one over R squared dependence. So technically this goes out to infinity. I've only drawn it out a, a certain distance. Another interesting thing is that at R equals zero, right on the current element, the magnetic field approaches infinity. And if that bothers you, it should. And, but the real answer is, well, the line current is infinitely thin. It's not real. In reality, we have a volume current element and once we get R that starts being inside that current element, then we're cutting off part of the current and we don't get this infinite magnetic field. But certainly the magnetic field is very intense close to conductors. So for integrating line currents, we'll have to make sure we don't actually need the magnetic field on the wire. 
Maybe this one isn't as ob is obvious, but there's also a longitudinal dependence. So here it's a side view of the wire. We have current flowing along this wire, and we're looking at a differential current element right in the center of that wire. Well, there's a decay in the magnetic field intensity with distance along the wire, and it decays both, or the same in both directions. It turns out this has a one over Z cubed dependence. So it drops as distance cubed as we move away from that differential current element. Now, unlike the radial direction where when R equals zero, we got infinite magnetic field. When Z equals zero here, we don't get an infinite magnetic field, but we certainly do get a maximum. Now, when we're integrating, our differential magnetic field to get a total magnetic field. On the right here is how I'm visualizing this. So I'm drawing the magnetic field around this differential current element as I'm integrating along the length of that wire. Now, of course, this goes out to infinity. I kind of just due to my limitation of graphics, I'm making it look as if it's a finite extent, but it extends out to infinity. And so if I'm interested in some point here, I'm constantly adding up those differential magnetic fields as I'm integrating along the wire to get the total magnetic field. So I hope this visualization helps you look at that integral and see what's going on.